Superintendent Michael Morris, and welcome into the latest episode of Window into ARPS. Today I'm so pleased to be joined by two of our administrators from the high school, Interim Principal Mickey Gromacki and Assistant Principal Talib Sadiq. Thank you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having us. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, I wondered if you could start by telling the community a bit about yourself and how you came to be an administrator at the high school level. Sure, I can, I can start. Um, so in 2008, uh, I was in Philadelphia, and um, my husband at the time had been offered a position at Amherst College. And um, so it was interesting because the role I was in as associate principal of a high school, um, I really loved and didn't want to leave, but we had to make a decision. And so our plan was to start to look for um, open administrative positions in Western Massachusetts, and then we were going to decide whether or not I was going to stay in Philadelphia for a year until something opened up, or whether or not I would be able to find something in 2008. And at that time, uh, there was a middle school uh, principal opening, and um, I remember call, and I had heard that Amherst High School was actually one of the better schools in Western Mass, because I had no familiarity with Massachusetts at that time, especially Western Mass. And so I, I remember calling Kathy Mazur and saying, I see that you have a middle school opening. I'm not interested in that position, um, but I would like to um, give you my name and my information in case an assistant principal job at, a high, at the high school were to open up. And about two weeks later, she called me and said, as it turns out, we are going to have an opening as an assistant principal um, at Amherst Regional High School. Why don't you come out and take a look and learn more about our district? And so I had done that in March. I met with uh, Mark Jackson at the time, and then I became uh, a formal candidate in, I think, June. And then I remember moving, getting married, and started the job um, like August 15th of that year. And the funny piece about that is the, the responsibilities with the position that I took were the exact responsibilities I had in Philadelphia. And so I was building the master schedule, looking at the budget, doing teacher evaluation. So, so I think my husband and I have always felt like it was it was just meant to be. <laughs> it was a perfect fit. So that's that's how I ended up here. Great. Thank uh, you. Tal? Yeah, I'm originally from Amherst and after high school went to uh, Wolverine Munson Academy for a year, then the Army and a few other places. And when I decided to go back to college, went to Oyster Community College, and then started. Um, college late but I did my undergrad at finished it at Amherst at UMass Amherst <coughs> excuse me and then during that time I had done um, an internship a volunteer part of the class I was in a volunteer position with uh, a nonprofit in the area that did some tutoring in apartment complexes in the area and my conversations with the students we were tutoring and I also met some people in the school counseling program at UMass really opened my eyes to my passion and desire to work with students and I realized I wanted to work with them. I wasn't exactly sure how. I forget first. Guidance counselor sounded great and Barry Brooks was my guidance counselor. I have great memories of him, one of my favorite people. And so then once I got into the counseling program and learning more about the school and there was um, an administrative program at the university that I enrolled in and then the district um, administrative program and then thinking more about serving the community and, and connecting with students kind of led me to where I am now, the opening in high school and interviewing and getting a job, so, yeah. Great, thank you. Mickey, um, Tal was able to share some of his background before you became an administrator. What, were you involved in education before mm -hmm. you became um, an assistant principal at high school in Pennsylvania? Yeah, so um, I was teaching, my first classroom was in 1993, and I was teaching um, in an urban setting, both social studies and English. And um, I was really content and kind of saw myself staying in the classroom a long time. But in 1999, so I had, I had taught for about six years, um, I was in an alternative school at that time, and they had approached me. And I remember they had called me in, and I thought there was something wrong, and they had asked me if I would be the principal of the program. And I remember you know, being 26 years old saying, a principal? I, I'm not much older than, than the high school students that I'm teaching. But um, they convinced me to try it and take it on. And it's interesting because much like our Summit Academy, the alternative school at that time that I was in was in a large suburban high school. And so there ended up being an opening a couple years later as assistant principal of that high school, which I accepted. And so you just think about how careers change and opportunities present themselves. So I don't know that I ever went in with the desire of being a, you know, an administrator or principal but it just kind of happened, and at that point, I just, I really loved it, and I reached a point 
I would say, you know, 10 or 15 years ago where I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Yeah. So. I think a common thread when I talk to administrators on this show and elsewhere is that, you know, that, that wasn't necessarily the plan of any of the admin, right. educational administrators we have is to become an administrator. <laughs> people went in and they were a counselor or a teacher working with students and people saw promise, you know, others saw promise in them and encouraged them to take those next steps in their career mm -hmm. and kind of perhaps expand you know, who they interact with and, and the sphere of influence they can have. So thank you, thanks for sharing that. So going back, <coughs> narrowing down to the high school, Amherst Regional High School, what are some of the exciting things that are happening this year? Um, Todd, would you mind getting us started? Sure. Um, of course, there's a lot of exciting things happening in the high school, a few of them. One, we have our restorative justice program. That's uh, actually a class this year. It's been a desire of the district to really try to implement restorative justice into our everyday practices. It's great to you know, repair harm between two students who have conflicts or students and teachers or even you know, teachers and fam family members. <clears throat> so we have a class and it's a great leadership opportunity for the students as well because they're learning how to be peer, mediata peer mediators and to run restorative circles with, again, their peers or other folks in the community. And actually, as part of our kind of launching it this year when we started our, our first meeting with all the adults, we started out in check-in circles, the way a lot of um, sort of practice is done in circles, and gave us a chance to kind of model the behavior we want the students to implement and adopt throughout the school. Um, of course, there's a lot of other exciting things going on as well. We have a great advisory program that does some career training opportunities for the students. Also, <coughs> excuse me, um, gives our student leaders um, some chances in the spring. We're going to have um, more students in the leading different advisory activities. Um, we have, we're trying to use it also to expand PBIS, positive behavior intervention supports throughout the school with uh, acknowledgments and we have a pretty cool QR code that students can scan and acknowledge another student for doing, for exemplifying some of our core values, being supportive or inclusive or upstanding. So some of the things that are happening that we're proud of at the high school. Great, thanks. Vicki, would you like to add to that? Sure, I'm happy to add to that because I too am excited about the restorative justice um, work that's happening and the personnel associated with that. Um, but I always, I always feel so fortunate, um, given the size of our school. So you know, we have about 950 students, and the budget challenges that we have. I still think we have one of the most fantastic elective programs that rival many high schools, um, even high schools that might have more resources than ours. And we're still operating a full ceramics program. We have broadcast journalism. We have dance, we have music production, um, all the music. Once I start itemizing them, I know I'm going to forget many, um, but our engineering offerings, our STEM offerings. So I just, I'm so proud to, to be in a school that still really values the arts. And I'm hoping that even through some of the leadership changes that we continue to keep that at, at the center of yeah. what we value. Speaking of the arts, would you mind just sharing a little bit? I know we're taping this in late December, but there was a mm -hmm. recent production by our theater mm -hmm. department. Um, I think was very noteworthy. I know it affected many, mm -hmm. um, both students, but also not just faculty, but community members who came in to see it. Mm -hmm. Do you mind sharing that with, for people who maybe missed it, just hearing a little bit about yeah. uh, what Mr. Bechtold uh, put on and, and the students mm -hmm. put on? So yeah, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to it, the Laramie Project, <coughs> and I'm not sure how familiar people are with it based on interviews from the tragedy that happened in Laramie. Um, Wisconsin? Yeah, with Matthew Shepard. With Matthew Shepard back in 1998. And the way it was an interactive theater, so it was done throughout the different school. There were some scenes that took place in the library, some in different classrooms, some in the theater, um, some in the dance studio, and all of it was based on the interview tapes from all the people in Laramie that they interviewed. So having that time from going from one scene and kind of digesting all of the powerful information and seeing the students perform and the passion that they put into it, how organized it was, seeing them perform and do their pieces and having to take a break and walk to another location. It really, I think the interview piece and the way he organized and directed, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was a really meaningful experience. And I'm not exactly expressing it to try to, to paint as clear of a picture and as nice of a picture as it was, but there was a lot of props throughout the school based on, again, all on the interviews and actual events that happened there. 
Yeah, we're so lucky to have John Bechtold <coughs> and his immersive theater um, background and experience that he brings to just you know a show that's already powerful the way it was originally written, but for John to take it and rewrite it and then have his team do what they do, it, it, I just, again, it's just a, a, a really fantastic component that he is willing to take what he has and share it with um, the students in Amherst High School and the community, and it's really special. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, you know, being a high school administrator is not an easy job, uh, for sure. You talked about the lack of breakfast and sometimes lunch, yeah. right? I think that's indicative of, of the role. What are some of the challenges um, that you face, and perhaps, you know, how do you manage those challenges, or what are some of the kind of the benefits as well, or what mm -hmm. are parts that you enjoy? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to start. So. With 950 adolescents in the building, um, I, you know, you always hope that you could get to know all the students in your building. And I find that it's a real challenge because I'd like to do that and finding ways, you know, to have that happen in the midst of what else has to happen in a day, I know can be challenging. And adolescence is also just a tough time for a lot of students. And so I find it really challenging. Um, as I work with students who might make mistakes or, or make choices, um, in that moment they're not necessarily able to see that it's an opportunity for growth and it can be a painful time. Um, I do think that we're surrounded by a really strong counseling team and also you know, our whole educational team in the building I think recognizes that, that students are at that point in their life and they do a great job of really trying to hold and support students, but, it, but it's challenging on a day-to-day -day basis um, to work with students when, when those situations occur. Yeah, and there's a lot that happens every day in this school, so coming in with a plan and things on your calendar, then as things come up throughout the day, um, not being able to necessarily give as much attention to some of the things that you'd like to just because there's so much going on. But again, having a great administrative team and counselors and deans and teachers in general, it's it doesn't seem as overwhelming as it easily could if people didn't work so well together. So staying on that theme, what does a typical day look like for for you? Or is that does that even exist for, <laughs> for, for you all at the high school? I think that's... You know, it's like a, the blessing and the curse type of thing. It's great. I like to not have, I, I like not having typical days, but sometimes, you know, it is nice to have just a kind of a day that you can do everything that's on your calendar. You can make all the meetings. Um, <clears throat> again, it's, you know, a lot of different things. Of course, a lot of interactions with teachers and with students and with their family members, spending a lot of time with emails. It's, it's the way we communicate now. So responding to uh, so many different emails about a, a variety of different things, things going on in the school, in the community, things with individual families. Um, it's a lot of that, a lot of emails, a lot of meetings, mm -hmm. a lot of steps through the school. Yeah, I, I would agree with what Talib said. I, you know, people sometimes ask, what's the difference? Because I, because I was in the building for 10 years as an assistant principal, what's the difference between what it was like as an assistant principal and now the principal? And I joke and I say about 400 emails a day <laughs> is the main difference. I, I can't believe the volume. Um, and yet recognizing it's so important to communicate with our stakeholders. And, and I'd much rather get an email with someone asking a question or trying to connect than not having that communication. But I'm someone who, um, like you, I, I, I can't, I, I don't like not responding in the moment and just reality happens and sometimes you just can't get to them for a day or two. And I, I find that a huge challenge that I'm working through personally is to not be on email 24 hours a day because you really could be in this job. Absolutely. What are some of your favorite moments, Vicki, you've been at the high school for longer than Tal, but what are some of the fam favorite moments you think back of your time at, at the mm -hmm. high school? So I always think of that that Friday in June, sitting on the stage, and just, you know, having having talked to students for so many years about that night, and that night just hangs out there in their sophomore year and their, you know, their junior year, but when that night actually happens, and to see the students in their caps and gowns and, and walk across the stage, and I feel so fortunate that I'm um, one of the administrators, like we, like you will get to do, to shake everyone's hand as they come through. Um, that's just, that's really special. Um, 
And at the same time, I mean, while that's the culminating event, I do think what's so nice is, is going into classrooms and seeing that student who's been working on that art project for weeks, like finally have a, a finished product or, or see those bulletin boards that our art teachers, you know, Ben, Jeff or Hannah, you know, they create those those different pieces and having been in a room and see someone in the beginning stages of something or you see someone go to the board in a math class and actually explain how they got the answer they got. I just think those little, those mini successes that you witness throughout um, the days and throughout the weeks are, are really exciting too. Thank you. Yeah, definitely similar to Mickey seeing the student, the students, most of the students who went through the Amherst Middle School are now right. in high school right. and seeing how much they've matured and grown up and now to become the young adolescents in middle school to these young adults now about to go off in the world. It's great seeing them, how thoughtful they are. And, and seeing them in the performance like the Laramie Project or performing in sports <clears throat> and in other ways that they shine throughout the year. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the interesting pieces of feedback I got this year is at the beginning of the year, as you, as you both attended, we had convocation, and, and one thing I decided was just to show the video with no sound of students walking across the stage, just as filler mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you know our staff are walking in, because it's one of the it's really the only opportunity that our entire staff gets together each year. And how many people, and I'm talking about kindergarten teachers, not just mm -hmm. people at the high school, really appreciated seeing that and trying to see if yeah. they could see their students. Yeah up on the stage, they remember them when they were five years old, and here they are as young adults walking across the stage. So that's something that, you know, we plan to make an annual tradition because we do, right. you know, live stream that for family members. So we have a, a really nice yeah. videotape of, of that event. But I was surprised. I said, you know, let's see how it goes. But the number of people came up to me, uh, all grade levels, high school, middle, and elementary, and even preschool, and saying, just what an amazing experience because, you know, not everyone can go to the graduation, not everyone can attend that, but to see their work materialize in that you know tangible way yes. uh, was so powerful so yeah. I agree with you it really is a special event and we need to thank you because I remember calling you <laughs> asking you for the live stream of that event because we have so many students who have family members that that is such an event that they want to see but they're not in Amherst and so I just want to continue Thanks. to thank you. you thank you for doing that supporting good staff ideas is mm -hmm. the best thing I do so um, you know, you talked about a little bit earlier, Talib, in ways that students become leaders at the, mm -hmm. at the high school level. You know, especially developmentally, they're more, their readiness is pretty high for that. What, can you describe a little bit of how that, it, either of you, can you describe a little bit of how that might work or how you see that working in terms of students taking on uh, more active roles in the leadership of the school? Mm -hmm. So, of course, we have student government, that students, our student council. Students get elected to and do a great job of advocating for their peer groups for different causes and events they want to put on. Also this year with the restorative justice program, it's a great leadership opportunity for those students to, I mean that specifically was designed for, to teach them how to perform restorative circles and to be leaders amongst their peers. And in many of our um, after school programs, the MSAN, Minority Student Achievement Network, another great leadership opportunity. They go to conferences um, all over the country and then they bring back what they've learned with an action plan on things they can do to try to help the school feel more inclusive and welcoming. And the, again, they create an action plan when they go to the nationwide MSAN conference and then they come back and share it with their peers. Um, also, there's a lot of little ways that students can become, that we see them becoming leaders in the hallways, helping out one another. And the classroom teachers also provide a lot of leadership opportunities for students, whether it's leading a, you know, a group discussion or um, being leading a lab or other activities like that within the classroom. So. It's nice that they have a variety of ways, you know, and of course there's sports and performing arts and other ways that they, the leadership that they display in those arenas also, they demonstrate it throughout the day in school as well. So. Thank you. Given the age of the students, um, how do parents and guardians <coughs> interact with the school? Because um, we know that as students get older, um, they may not want their parents and guardians. Some may mm -hmm. not want their parents and guardians as involved as when they were in, for instance, elementary mm -hmm. school. Um, how do you see the parent, the role of parent guardians playing out at Amherst Regional High School? Yeah, I mean, we, we really appreciate when, when parents advocate for their students. That That's incredibly important, and, it, and it's just part of a partnership that we want to cultivate. And at the same time, as students um, get into the older grades, um, 
it's not uncommon that we have conversations to say, okay, so how can we help support the student to self-advocate? And while I know what the ultimate goal is, what can we do to position the student to be able to demonstrate those skills, whether it's the communication skills or those self-advocacy skills? So, um, so doing that with parents, so instead of saying, you know, I'm not willing to engage with you, I'd like the student to do that, I've actually worked with parents to say, okay, how can we together, you know, we'll set up the meeting and we'll have a, a student, um, you know, come into my office and talk about what it is that might be going well or not well, and how can we come up with a plan. So we really try to shift um, that conversation to the students, but at the same time, there's some events that do really just require parental and, and guardian involvement, and that's fine too. So, so um, our last question is oftentimes after people view these, and thanks to Amherst Media for all your work, um, they like to say, oh, I, I'd like to help with that, or oh, I actually want to reconnect. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm an alumni, and I saw this on fa in YouTube mm -hmm. or Facebook. Um, what, are, what is the best way for um, viewers to get in touch with you if they have an idea they want to share, or mm -hmm. uh, they have a question about the high school, they're thinking about where to send their child for next mm -hmm. year? Okay. So I can put a plug in for the PGO coffee that's coming up on January 24th, um, where Talib and Assistant Principal Mary Custard, who's not here today, but she will be joining us. And that's our opportunity to really sit with community members who are available. But if, you know, knowing that not everyone's going to be able to make it out that night, they should, um, everyone should feel encouraged to contact us um, by email. Um, they can call the main office and get to one of us, and um, and uh, families are always welcome to schedule an appointment. Yeah. What's the main office number? Just because the email I know will flash, but yes, four one three three six two seventeen hundred. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I know uh, viewers will learn a lot more, <coughs> know a lot more after watching this about Amherst Regional High School. And thanks for your daily work, keeping all 950 of our students <laughs> engaged and, and focused on, on the learning in the variety of ways that we conceptualize learning in Amherst. So um, thank you so much, and thanks to you, the viewers. We'll be back next month with another episode, and thanks again to Amherst Media for their generous support of the Window into ARPS show. Mm -hmm.